what you guys bring to the table is something that I, I hadn't heard covered that I I am just as guilty of being unaware of as why you wrote this book. And that is the impact that gray divorce has on adult children. Did you push record? Thanks for joining us on Second Act TV. Today, I'd like to welcome two new content experts to Second Act, marriage and family therapist Carol Hughes and Bruce Fredenberg, the authors of Home Will Never Be the Same Again, a guide for adult children of gray divorce. Bruce, Carol, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having us, Silke. Yeah, we're glad to be here. Thank you. Well, and we found out we're neighbors. How unusual is that? <laughs> right. I interview yes. I interview people from you know, oh gosh, all over the country, even you know, from other uh, continents, and here we are, you know, mm -hmm. about three miles away from each other. So I'm, yeah. I'm I'm thrilled about that. And the topic is so near and dear, obviously to me. I am a statistic of gray divorce. We've covered that a lot actually on this channel, but for the viewers who are tuning in that don't know what that is, it's a term that is coined for the this enormous divorce rate of couples after 50 that started, I believe it started 1990 till now, like the divorce rate doubled. Am I mm -hmm. correct in, in those statistics? Mm -hmm. That's correct. And actually, be to, uh, the divorce rate for the 65 and plus and older uh, tripled during that time. Yeah, yeah. That crazy. And there's lots of reasons for that, which actually we've covered, and I don't uh, want to go into that in this uh, segment. What you guys bring to the table is something that I, I hadn't heard covered, that I, I am just as guilty of being unaware of as <laughs> why you wrote this book. And that is the impact that gray divorce has on adult children. So what I'd like you to explain to your viewers, why, you know, why do we dismiss this and how, how can we help? Why don't we start with why, why do we not think about this? Well, at the, one reason is the legal system. People go to court or typically when they're getting a divorce and their attorneys tell them that the uh, law doesn't consider that they matter. They're, they're, they has no jurisdiction. They're adults and they're going to be fine. And there is that sense of, well, you know, you're lucky it didn't happen when you were a kid. And so you should be over it now. And so that's a big part of it. And then it's really tempting for a parent to hear the kids are going to be fine. Mm -hmm because they're already overwhelmed by their own feelings about the divorce and they don't even notice it. And then if some authority tells them, well, you don't have to worry about that. Wow, one less thing to worry about. That's a big part of it. And there's also a mythology in our culture and actually in the cultures of the industrialized world. This is a, a phenomenon that's happening around the world in the industrialized countries. And the belief is that because children are adults, 18 years and older, we've worked with adult children who were 50 years old, but because they're adults, they should be able to just roll with it and it shouldn't affect them. So that's a belief that our system has. Yeah. And the, one of the interesting things about that is the, the people who are divorcing are adults and it's hurting them. Why is it? I mean, we just, you know, we, it's, but it's seductive. Oh, good. One less thing to worry about. But it's so clear that I'm an adult that's hurting me. Why wouldn't it hurt you? Yeah. Well, as I've shared on other segments, uh, you know, again, I'm a statistic of gray divorce. I didn't have children, so I didn't have to worry about that. Uh, but several of my very close friends did. They left. And one of them, you know, well, actually, two of them stayed in the marriage until the children were out of high school because then mm -hmm. they were going to be okay. So, yes, I, I agree this exists. And, and, and no, I, I never thought to think of it that way either. So how, how what can, and, and you know, our, our audience is, you know, primarily 50 plus, so you're talking probably to more parents than you are to the children, to which this book is directed, and I think that's great. Uh how, what can you tell us <laughs> about helping the kids, or what do we need to consider? Well, first, it's important to not lose sight of the word child, because your adult child is always your child, and you are always the parent. And so just that concept has really helped parents to think about, and as Bruce was just saying very well, if it's affecting the parents, why wouldn't it be affecting the children? And so to be aware of how many losses their adult children are going through, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, but to really be aware of that and to listen to what your adult children are saying. If they're angry, there's a reason for them to be angry. 
if they're sad, there's a reason for them to be sad and hold a space of curiosity uh, and listen to them rather than becoming defensive or judgmental. Uh, the research shows that simply listening to someone who's sharing what they're feeling is part of healing. And I think most parents want that for their children, even their adult children. Yeah. There's also a temptation for some of the parents to turn their kids into their confidant. I mean, they're grown kids, but, you know, who wants to hear about another parent's infidelities or who made the financial blunders or or the parent themselves want to tell you about their their dating or their hurt or any of those things and or you know just that thing of making them your confidant against the other parent is destructive and also when they have family members who want to choose up sides that always causes more trouble later on so the parents can go out of their way to tell their own siblings who are the aunts and uncles of the of their adult children to allow them not to be drawn into these bash the other parent uh, conversations in fact maybe to insist that they allow their kids to have their own experience and and to discourage taking up sides because and that's hard to fix later oh sorry bruce were you done okay. I am. And, if, and if the parents can join together and create a unified story, so to speak, a narrative that they want the family members to know, the community members, sometimes even the community members try to line up on opposite sides. And if they can choose a win-win process for their divorce that's family-focused, that really helps the adult children and even grandchildren if they're grandchildren, because really family is forever. One of the common comments that adult children say is, my family's dead. It does feel like a death. And is that really what parents want their children to feel? And focus on how they can help uh, keep the family together in various uh, um, celebrations, activities, traditions, and so forth. Yeah. What is the likelihood you know, I mean, you guys, you, you're on the front line here. <laughs> you know, you, you deal with the children, you deal with the parents, mm -hmm. you're, you counsel people. What, what is the likelihood of people being uh, amicable? Wouldn't it be nice if we could say the majority? <laughs> but I, uh, I, I don't know of any research, and I don't think Bruce does either, about how many parents in the U.S. are able to do that. Some other countries have actually done a way better job than we have. The Scandinavian countries have a different divorce culture than we do. But we're talking about the U.S. right now. Uh, it is sadly the minority in, in my clinical experience. And as I said, I don't know the uh, research on that, if there is any. But wouldn't it be better for families and their adult children and grandchildren if they could be more amicable and show up at celebrations and not have tension in the room and not say, I'm not going to that graduation if your mother or father is going. I mean, it's not about that, the parent. It's about whoever's celebrating. Yeah. Well, I know it's possible because my, uh, my boyfriend, and I have a uh, new relationship of about eight, almost nine years now, and we have holidays together. I do Thanksgiving at his house. We go to Christmas to his ex-wife's house where the kids are always together every, every birthday, every celebration. And they're all adult kids now. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they were younger when they divorced, so it's not exactly the same. But mm -hmm. I do know that it's possible if we take our egos out of it and, and, and just do what's, what's right for the kids. And I think maybe in this, uh, and again, you're the experts here, so I'm asking that it is that dismissiveness that if, if the kids are older, they they don't matter, or not that they don't matter, but mm -hmm. th that they should be okay, that, that we just don't think about. Right. You, you made a really good point just now, Sylvia. Uh, ego. If the parents can leave their ego out of it and really put their shoe, themselves in the shoes of their adult children and maybe grandchildren, what do they think they want? And that could be a, a great turning point for the parents in helping their adult children. There's a docu documentary filmmaker we met some years ago who interviewed children who were going through divorce. And, but she, one of the things she shared with us in a private conversation was how and when she was divorced, she's looking back on it. She was surprised looking back how much support there was for war. People saying, you really should get it, get, you know, give it to them. 
And when she's after she's interviewing these kids and she finds out how much that hurts them. And and so it seems that even if people don't start off wanting to fight, their their relatives are angry at the person who hurt their loved one. Right. 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 Well, for the sake of this segment, you know, one of the main things that I that was really eye opening for me is the fact that we need to take this into consideration. So that that's a point that I want to leave in closing this out. Maybe each of you can give me at least like one important way we can help the children cope. I think boundaries making it really clear that children should be allowed to have their own relationship with their own parent and nobody can say you can't talk to dad or I'm not coming or you can't talk to mom. It's a different relationship than the parents have with each other. Kids are entitled to their own relationship with the parent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what I would say is to realize that if your adult children are sharing with you or acting out that they have negative feelings, know that they're not alone about the research. The little bit that there is on adult children of gray divorce indicates that about 50% of all adult children in the U.S. report feeling quite serious negative feelings about their parents' uh, gray divorce. And so realize that this is just as true a phenomenon as the gray divorce rate. Well, it's it's very interesting uh, to me, you know, again, being very close to it, having dealt with this topic that really nobody else has raised it. So thank you for doing that. We will, of course, link to your book uh, if any, you know, so everybody can get their own copy. I'll link to your information to your website so people can get a hold of you directly if they so choose. And I want to hold you over and let's continue this discussion about you you know you have made the the decision to divorce you are now aware that your adult children matter so how do you tell them and what do you not say so we'll talk to you on our next segment of second act tv <laughs> If you haven't done so already, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. The button is right over here. Just click on through to YouTube and when you see the little bell right next to the subscribe button, hit that too. We'll notify you every time we launch a new video. See you next time.